My name is Rhapsody, welcome back to Slate the Spy Modded. Alright, we are going to be continuing with The Servant, the next in the rotation of the characters that we had installed before we started this. Uh, the Servant is a servant of demons, perfected at killing and housekeeping, holds a thousand and one blades, and as I understand is some kind of a, an anime? Some, some kind of a Toho? Uniform at the start of each combat obtains six knives. So we'll talk about the the core strategies of this character, the core strategies and mechanics of this character as we go into it. Ooh, lose all gold for random rare relic. Maybe my favorite moderator, uh, moderator modifier. Let's go with that. Curious feather from Hubris. Whenever you play a power, gain one strength. All right. So the base deck is four strikes, four defends. A copy of kidney shot. Throw two knives. So knives are the servant's most dedicated weapons can be thrown or converted. Uh, they're a resource that you use to cast things and you accrue it using other cards like exchange. Discard two cards, obtain two knives. However, this also puts in a nod to another one of the core mechanics for this character, and that is a discard synergy. This character has something written on their cards occasionally using the keyword shift, and that is if you discard this card, trigger the shift effect. Cool. Uh, because I don't really know how to play this character super well yet, I'll probably take a relatively safe path. So that's three rest, two elites. That's what I consider to be relatively safe. So this is, uh, eight and six. We can take out the frontliner and then defend. And then at the end of the turn, exchange. We may want to consider powers more highly than we otherwise would because of curiosity. Next turn ought to just be lethal. Yeah, strike, strike. Ease. All right. Replace. Discard a card from your draw pile. Place a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile. It is worth noting, these trigger in order. So if you discard a card from your draw pile, you can then put that same card atop your draw pile. So if you have a discard synergy card, that can be really powerful. It upgrades to be zero cost. There's also fast forward, gain 9 block, which is like a leap already. Upgrades to 12. Yeah, so it is like a leap. Uh, if there is no attack in your hand, draw 2 cards. So it has the effect of leap and impatience combined. Although impatience upgrades to draw an extra card. Then there's alleviate. Uh, discard up to, two car uh, up to 3 cards, rather. Uh, gain 5 block for each card you discard. Upgrades to be 7. Uh, here I'll probably... I don't know what I want to take. None of these are foundational for a strategy is the thing. I think I'll take fast forward just because it can be an upside on leap. Alright, so which of these do I want? Sunfruit is heal 3 HP every single time you climb a floor. I think swift fruit is 2 dex. Fade fruit, fade fruit. What's fade fruit again? Uh, I don't remember Fade Fruit. I definitely don't know Earth Fruit, uh, Earth, Earth Fruit at all, so I'll take it. Just to learn about it. Cool. Not half bad there at all. Really would have liked another attack that turn, but that's okay. At least we got those two. Definitely want to continue weakening the enemy. I'll actually stab here, then fast forward. Yeah, because it draws me into a zero cost that I can just use to get some more knives, just in case I need them later. It's very unlikely we do, but just in case. Cool. Yeah, rest of my deck is relatively aggressive. We should have an easy time here. Okay. So here's our first shift effect card, the shifting gears. Uh, draw three cards for one energy. Upgrades to be four cards for one energy. So that's akin to, say, skim uh, from the defect in the base game. Uh, shift, so only triggers when you manually discard the card. Gain one elegance. Elegance is a stat similar to dex, except it improves the gain of protection as well as of block. This character has the ability to gain protection, which basically functions like temporary HP. Uh, that is to say, basically functions like temporary HP in all of the other aspects of temporary HP. 
Time Warp, deal six damage, discard a card, shift, draw a card, upgrades to discard two. So this is a discard enabler in a deck that just doesn't have enough discard, but does have a bunch of shift effects. I think I just want to take the shifting gears here. Gains one elegance, upgrades to only gain, yeah, still only gains one elegance, sure. So I knew this was going to be a mimic, but I really do want the relic. Eh, there's no use in drawing now. Okay. Kidney shoot him, strike him, fast forward. Really would have wanted to exchange my shifting gear there. I'll take one damage and gain two gold here. That's like a really bad transfer rate, but... It also burns the gold out of my deck so that I don't have to worry about drawing a hand that's just gold. Ow. Good thing I got kidney shot this turn. Desperately needed. I really need an actual damage dealing card for this character and I just don't have it yet. I almost certainly have lethal next turn. Treasure, treasure, strike. Toy Battleship. Whenever you enter a rest site during the next combat, the first card played each turn also draws one card. Okay, so here's another mechanic in the character, and that is the mechanic of vision. Vision means you have to make a prediction as to what the enemy is going to do next turn. Only are they going to attack or are they not going to attack? And if you are correct, next turn you will get the effect. So gain 15 protection and apply two weak. Snipe is really powerful. Uh, throws one knife, each deals 15 damage and applies one vulnerable, and then 20 in one vulnerable. Moonlight is just a straight up knife expending card, right? Throws two knives, each deals five damage and applies one vulnerable. I kind of want to just take the snipe because with the elites on this floor, I will always be able to predict what their next attack is or what their next turn is. Spin the wheel and... Okay, full heal. Yeah. Not half bad. Here I will infuse in order to pick up my earth fruit. Start each combat with four bark skin. Remember bark skin. Reduce attack damage taken by four. At the end of everyone's turn, reduce bark skin by one. Huh. All right. Uh, well, I'll predict that this frontliner is going to attack next turn because they are, they are going to attack next turn. Easy. Oh, who could have possibly known? We'll just double shoot you, defend. Okay, Bark Skin is actually really powerful. Ah, yes, we do have the uh, we do have the first boss against which Bark Skin is actually going to be completely crippling. I'm not even going to play Exchange here because I don't want to discard that Dazed. I do want to burn it. The Hexaghost. Because the Hexaghost on turn two does a uh, multiple time attack. Ooh, I do want to defend this turn if I can. Yeah, there we go. Does a multiple time attack that could be actually pretty punishing. Yeah, unfortunately, Snipe is in the bottom of the deck here. Really poor for us. We'll Snipe you for a not attack. Then we'll weaken you. Then we'll fast forward. Oh, and we get an Elegance. Lovely. Finally got a point of that. There's the front line down. All right. Double strike next turn. Good. To see it. Double defend. Hey, double defend and snipe. Exactly what I wanted. You're not attacking next turn. Easy. <sighs> that was really good. 
Kinetic Charger. Whenever you play a card that costs at least three energy, gain energy. Uh, none of that in the deck right now, but maybe eventually. Ah, another mechanic for this character. Double-edged. It has Backlash written in the bo uh, bottom. Applies one vulnerable, weak, and frail to you. So if you play it at the end of your turn, the weak doesn't matter, and the frail doesn't matter, but the vulnerable matters because your enemy is then attacking thereafter. Uh, but the problem is you don't want to play it at the end of your turn because it applies to vulnerable. So you really want to play it earlier than that so that you can benefit from the vulnerable. Now, weakness prevents 25% uh, of damage. Vulnerable increases damage by 50%. So you're still increasing your damage by 25%. Just occasionally that doesn't matter to the breakpoint of your cards and you end up with the same. Uh, Shattered Reality is really interesting. Deal double damage to all enemies on its... Uh, on its d -d 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 shift effect. There we go. So if I had discard synergy, I'd obviously be going all over that. You can also just take fast forward plus a bunch of zero cost attacks. That seems like a, a build and a half right there. I think I do want discard synergy in this deck because I've already taken the shifting gears. So I can use it for the draw to refill my hand with cards to discard or I can shift with it. So I'll take the shattered elegance there. I think the snipe needs to be upgraded just so that I can push through the next elite, though. Tiny chest. Upon pickup, gain 30 gold. You're 10% more likely to find treasure in question mark rooms. Definitely use the explosion potion in this fight. Yeah, there's no, no ifs, ands about that one. Wow. What a poor hand. So if we upgrade the exchange, it's called exchange, right? Yeah. If we upgrade exchange, it becomes retained, so we can just hold it in hand until we have our discard synergy, which would be really nice. Thermal pylon is probably attacking next turn, but I'm not certain, unfortunately. Hopefully they are. Yeah, they are. Beautiful. Down goes you. Shifting gears for the draw, and... Ooh. So you're probably attacking next turn as well. Defend and then hit you. Actually didn't need to hit the backliner there. They would die anyway. And they are attacking. Beautiful. And that's us done. Enemy down. Hand mirror. Whenever you gain vulnerable or weakened, it is also applied to the enemy that sent it. So... Backlash isn't going to send this to our enemies. Unruled. Deal nine damage. For each stack of weak, vulnerable, and frail on you, deal two additional damage. So this is the payoff card for a, uh, for a Backlash deck, but Potential is one of the payoff cards for a Shift deck, and that is Shift deals five additional combat da uh, damage this combat and put this into your hand. So because of that, you can just discard this a bunch of... Like, you can have a bunch of discard cards in your hand and one potential and just get a ridiculous potential out of it. Literally. All right. We're going to fight one or more elite here, I think, actually. Just really hoping to get the exchange there. Oh, well. Okay. Well, you're definitely attacking next turn. Got him. Okay, we got the Echo Draft there. Clear all weak, vulnerable, and frail. Each stack gives you one protection, as well as barrier. Gains seven block and seven protection. Upgrades to 10 and 10. That's 20 block for two energy. Is that good? Half of that block stays with you. Hmm. I mean, the deck doesn't have much defense yet. I'll take it. Yes, even over the Alleviate. Okay, I really need, like, a bunch of attacks in the same hand. Ooh, that's a bunch of attacks in the same hand. Hello, Steroid Potion. Let's go. So, 18 damage from the Kidney, if I throw that twice with the Echo Draft. I think I do. Definitely attacking next turn. There we go. We took one damage. Reverence. Right click during combat to activate. Usable once per turn. Play an attack card from your hand at no cost and exhaust it. 
duplication. Duplicate one card. The duplicates cost zero this turn. Backlash. You can upgrade duplicates. Duplicate two cards, rather. Um, I mean, we don't have anything effective enough to want to duplicate, do we? Not yet. I mean, barrier, maybe. I'll take it, just because it can get broken and nutty. So we should smith here probably the exchange, just so we can hold it until we can use it for discard synergy. Do I want to go for one more elite? Oh, it's so risky, but I... Ah, oh, damn it. It had to be these elites. This is going to be the worst one for me. Uh, duplication on that snipe just means I get to use the snipe two times this turn. Let's do it. Midliner is probably attacking next turn. Well, didn't hit the target I was going for, but that's fine. <sighs> Midliner is attacking. Mm. Knocked him twice. Well, we get to hold the exchange here at the very least. Now we steroid potion, exchange the potential and shattered reality. It's a bunch of AOE damage right there. We'll take out the thermal pylon. Then potential the backline, fast forward for defense, and we're good. Right, Sundial. Every three times you shuffle your draw pile, gain two energy. Instant armor. It's innate. Gain six protection. Convert three knives to satellite. Satellite. Whenever you use an attack, lose one satellite and attack an extra time for four damage. Whenever you are attacked, lose one satellite and deal four damage to the attacker. Satellites count as knives. <clears throat> So that's why cards that say throw one knife each uh, each deals nine damage and bounces between enemies two times. Uh, each, despite it only ever throwing one knife, is because you can use satellites to increase the amount of knives you throw. I believe. I'm not certain about that, though. Okay. Duplication so that we can just get a bunch of snipes in the deck seems really powerful to me. Definitely should have kidney shot there. Still not going to be taking damage this turn, though. Ah, I should have played, like, the strike first, because I possibly could have drawn something that I could have discarded. Damn it, I did draw it. Oh, well. Definitely don't want duplication right now. Played my hand too quickly. Again... Could have duplicated the snipe. Literally exactly the two cards I wanted in my hand at the same time. And I got him. And was just dumb about it. Okay. Okay, I'll exchange the burn and the potential... God, we drew the same Shattered Reality. I've got to remember that I have the toy battleship. Whenever you enter a rest site during the next combat, the first card played each turn also draws one card. I've got to remember that. Now, I'm going to duplicate the potential. Just to have those extra potentials in the deck, because that's a bunch of free damage. Definitely attacking next turn. <clears throat> Here we go. Beautiful. We'll strike first. And we did draw Shattered Reality again, but we don't care about it. We want to play both of these potentials for 30 damage each. Alright. 
So we'll weaken the enemy and then... Seven blocks, seven armor. We've got the kill next turn. <clears throat> Excuse me. Still trying to live down the flu. You're attacking, definitely. And now I defend, defend. We're good. Bye-bye. This obviously isn't going to scale well late, so we need more. Soul Sculpture. Deal three damage six times. Enemy loses three strength. Exhaust. Upgrades to four six times and four. Hmm. I mean, <clears throat> bunch of multi-hits. It does exhaust, but... Enemy loses four strength is pretty good. It's just like a straight up removal of four strength. Murderous Aura. At the start of your turn, apply one Blight to all enemies. Upgrades to be innate. Blight is... Uh, for each stack of Blight they have, they take one extra damage when attacked. So that is a synergistic thing with multiple attacks, like Soul Scripture is offering. Uh, True Sight. Vision effects will always be triggered. Upgrades to be retained as well. Hmm, I don't know which way I want to go with this. It feels like I want to lean into the discard build and I'm just using snipe as kind of a way to get there. Let's take a murderous aura. It just feels bad to play the seven torchhead. Uh, Love Arrow. Right-click during combat to activate. Targeted enemy. Every enemy between you and it becomes surrounded until the targeted enemy dies. The targeted enemy deals 50% more damage. Can only be used once per combat. Is that ever? Do I want to... Who would I do that to? Like, obviously not the gremlin knob. Obviously not in the gremlin fight either. 50% more damage. So, surrounded means you take 50% more damage as well, by the way. So, every enemy except for the targeted one, or every enemy between us, will take 50% more damage, which is what vulnerability does. So, they effectively are vulnerable. Although, you can stack it with vulnerability. Uh... But then the target in the back line does more damage. I mean, the Gremlin Leader would just rip me to shreds, never use it in a single target fight. I don't know about that. Uh, Velvet Choker. <clears throat> Gain energy at the start of your turn. You cannot play more than six cards a turn. I already have a duplication in the deck and a shifting gears with a bunch of draw. And I oftentimes use this to discard two potentials, which I then play. So I don't know if I want to take, like, literally any of these. The closest is Severed Torchhead, but, oh. I'm going to take it. Maybe it feels better to play with now. Maybe I'm just bad. Maybe I learn in this run how to use it, how to wield it correctly. Gain energy at the start of your turn. Whenever you play an attack, lose one strength for the turn. Whenever you play a skill, lose one dex for the turn. So we play our damage dealing, like our multiple attacks up first, then our big attacks at the end, and we play our dex gaining skills up first, and we play everything else at the end. That is to say, anything that doesn't give you block. So like this turn, I would defend, defend... I don't even want to duplicate the strike, though. Duplication in that hand doesn't really make sense. Not for us. Exchanging shifting gears and shattered reality here seems a good idea. Then I'll attack, because I have to, before I fast forward for the draw. Get another attack out. Okay. I believe the enemy is going to be attacking next turn as well. I'm not certain of it, though. 
So I start with a kidney shot because it's a multi-attack. Then I follow up with the snipe. I think you're attacking. I, I don't know the enemy, the enemies in this area, rather. I don't know their attack patterns well enough to claim anything. Not attacking. Damn. Ooh, hell yeah. Duplicate the barrier. <gasps> okay, so duplication. You can't duplicate the same card twice. I was suspecting that I would be able to just choose two cards and duplicate each of them, but it doesn't appear to be that way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Potential isn't going to grow fast enough in this fight for me to bother using, so I'll play it, then the fast forward. Probably just defend twice here, and then you're not attacking next turn. I can feel it. Hey, got him. That's the giant rat down. Second snipe. Uh, I didn't want to take it, but it's pre upgraded and we need the damage. Uh, I will just take the 5 max HP here. Transform a card. Transforming a curse, always transform it into a curse. Just making sure that you're aware. Because it's a good idea. Clever idea. Doesn't work. We got Suppressing Fire. Whenever you throw or convert a knife, gain two block. Upgrades to B3. Yeah. That could be foundational for a build pretty easily. All right. Pointy Mushroom. Whenever you play an attack that does not only target this monster, take two damage. Gain all the other enemies, gain two block. And all other enemies gain one strength. Let's shift first. That's obviously not what I wanted. I'm going to duplicate exchange and kidney shot. Then leave those exchanges in hand. All other enemies gain one strength. It's like they gain it forever. So I actually do need to kill the energetic mushroom almost certainly first. I'm going to assume they're not attacking next turn. Attacking. Beautiful. There goes the backliner. If only Murderous Aura was earlier here, we would have actually been able to use it effectively. And now it's just you and me, Shy Mushroom. Just two shy fun guys. Oh, come on. I had to. Uh, another shifting gear. Seems really good to me. I feel like we're just not going to have enough damage to live. <clears throat> or win, rather. But also live. Uh, I'll suppressing fire. Then we'll open with the kidney shot on the back line. Then throw a snipe. We're definitely guessing they're attacking next turn. Because they debuffed us this turn. Got him. Definitely barrier and then snipe the back line for an attack again. Yeah. Got him again. I get him one more time, I get a free cheesecake. 
Oh, got him one more time. It's a point of elegance for me. I have to defend before I start attacking here, otherwise the enemy will just hit me back. Hit me <laughs> It'll hit me back just to chat. Truly yours, your biggest fan. This is Stan. Oh, hell yes. Duplication on the snipe and then we'll just throw out a bunch of snipes. Because it's always technically attacking. It's always attacking. Got him. Bunch of damage there. And yeah, just settled that attack. We got it. Bye bye. <clears throat> Another a pre upgraded barrier? I do feel like those are actually like a huge part of the deck in terms of power. We'll upgrade the murderous aura to be innate because it feels like that's also really important. We're splashing together a bunch of different builds here just to kind of try and get through because it really feels like at any moment I could just lose for everything. Okay. If I attacked one more time, that frontliner would have been stunned there. Eh? That's right. They would have been so astounded by my ability that they would have been stunned. On. Oh, I hit the wrong target with that. That's okay, though. <sighs> Thank you, Barkskin, for actually keeping me through that turn, because I think that was actually a 3x5, so very important that Barkskin was there. Say the enemy's attacking next turn. I'm not certain about it, but I'll give it a go. They're not. They're not attacking next turn. They're definitely attacking... Next turn, no. Mm -hmm. And now we just get to take damage. Hopefully we get a discard card with the shifting gears. We do. We get two Shattered Realities. Hell yes. Great pickups there. Mm-hmm. Got him. Speed potion as well as... No. Convert three knives to satellite. Deal three damage to all enemies for each satellite you have. That's a satellite build. We don't have that. Alleviate. We have more cards that we need to discard. And we do need a little bit more defense. I'll take an alleviate there pretty happily. I want to upgrade the potential because it is my primary discard target. I want to put like a replace in this deck so that I can use potential more often. You gain three strength at the start of combat. You lose one strength over the next three turns from Onion Ring here. These frogs could just burn out the most important cards in our deck and then we are... Screwed. To put it lightly. Um... I don't actually want to use Reverence just to burn the strike out of my deck here because these enemies will burn a bunch of cards out of my deck. Yeah, there goes my duplication. I have to attack this front enemy three times in a turn if I want it back. And I just I just don't attack that much. Yep, not going to be attacking that much. There you go. You get to burn my duplication. No, you need to give Snipe back. Snipe is very important to me. Kidney shot plus strike. We can take that back. Thank you. Now I'll probably just be looking to double snipe the front line. I don't know their attack pattern is the problem here. I'll use reverence. And then... I'll say they're all attacking next turn. Because I have no clue. Hey, they both are. Beautiful. Beautiful. Exchange on Shattered Reality is really good. Let's 
once, once more. Beautiful. Just trying to get a bunch of block this turn, as well as build up some protection. There goes one of my shifting gears. That's fine. You're definitely attacking next turn, so we'll just kill that frog here. Uh-huh. There goes that frog. I am surprised by how well this is working for us. Like, really surprised. I've got 30 protection to rely on at this point, so I could just start not attacking anymore? I could start stopping to attack. If you think that made no sense, then yeah, fair enough. Good point, well made. All right. Ah, no attack, damn you. You had to no attack me, eh? Sphere of Dissonance. At the start of each combat, apply three vulnerable to a random enemy. Another Shattered Reality. Vision, deal six damage to all enemies and put this card into your hand. Can be upgraded any number of times. If I can get that early, I am going to just go so gung-ho on that. All the time, draw two cards. Becomes an eight. So it's just an extra card in your opening hand. Because you got to remember, you have to draw the bottle time. And then you get to cast it. It gives you two cards. So you have five cards in your hand. Bottle time being one. You cast it. You have four cards in your hand. Then you draw up two. So you only get one extra card in your hand. That's because this is a card, and it offsets its own card value. It's really important to make that point very clear. Card value and energy value are completely different things, and they are both resources that you have to manage in a game like this. And no card advantage as it exists in other games like MTG and Eternal and Hearthstone, etc. doesn't exist because you don't have a persistent board and you don't have a persistent hand. But it still is a concept that exists in deck building games. You have to trust me, please. Um, I'll take a bottle of time. Lion, whenever you play a uh, card, gain one strength this turn. Sure, more than happy to do that for you. Yeah, I probably should have used the reverence for the strike at the very end there. So we got roared, we are weakened for three turns. This is just not good. I do want to deal 10 more damage here at the cost of taking two more myself. Okay, what do I do now? I'm thinking barrier snipe. Barrier defense snipe. Enemy's definitely attacking next turn. It seems like that's all they're going to do. I mean, I can just snipe, say you're attacking, alleviate to discard all my cards and I'm fine. Good. There goes the lion. Uh, another shattered reality. Misdirect. Gain six block, apply one blight and weak. That is really powerful with blight. I think I need more energy and I need to upgrade both of these shifting gears so that I can fill a hand with cards that I can discard. So I've got how many cards that benefit from being discarded? One, two, three, four. Four total. And then I have how many discard activators? One. Oh, hang on. Never mind. I'm not even looking at my deck. Okay. So one discard activator. Two discard activators. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so it's just five and two. So 
So I need more discard activators. But having a larger hand will help me use one discard activator to just get a bunch of discard effects. Lights, camera, action! A gremlin with a wide grin, smile rather, approaches you. It's time for the Spire Famous Gremlin Quiz Show. I've got questions for you. Here's your answer to win some fabulous prizes. Are you ready? Of course you are. Uh, match this card art with its beta art. Oh, what? Okay, acrobatics. Oh. Oh, you. Alright, so. It depends. If it was given beta. Oh, this is a sneaky question. I'm gonna say this. But no, that looks like a poison effect. And that's definitely badminton. Oh, no, 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 that could be acrobatics. I'm going to say this. Uh, that is the toolbox that is a shop relic. Uh, which of these enemies holds the weapon in the left hand? Oh, how dare you? Timing it doesn't have a weapon. Mystic? Carantol? The, um, the scent. Oh, God. I swear, when I when I like play tested this uh, this mod, I got all of these right constantly, and now I'm just gonna screw it up on camera. The collector. The collector has no weapons. Um, the centurion. Who's the centurion again? It's not the champ. It's not the automaton. Centurion. Oh, it's insane. Wait, hang on. No, the mist the mystic. One of three! Oh god. Don't tell me. By the way, don't tell me in the comments what I got wrong and what I got right. I I'll work through all of them eventually. But also, I am real mad at myself for not getting that. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's a feels, that's a, that's a not good, that's a, oh, damn. All right, duplicate the snipe and the exchange. Then I'll double snipe for attacks next turn and defend for a little bit here as well. Uh-huh, there's two attacks next turn. Kidney shot potential. Forge in time. Exhaust your hand. Gain five protection and two knives for each exhausted card. Upgrades to seven and two. Yeah, okay. I mean, I do oftentimes end up with a huge hand, but the problem is I want the cards in my hand. I really want to upgrade another card here, but I worry if I don't rest, I'm probably dead. I don't think I've fought this one before. I can't see its name because it's hidden behind the button there, but I think it's more... I think it's M-A-W-S-H-R-O-O-M, more shroom, as in like a mouth and a shroom. Also, that looks like, oh, it's actually based off of the, the art for the more character. Got it. Yeah, it's definitely more shroom then. Couldn't give me a discard card for the life of me. I just wanted to discard the Shattered Reality. That would have been so good. Frontliner is definitely attacking next turn. That much is true. Uh, I'm going to use Cursed Concoction in this fight. So I get a status... Sorry, a curse in my draw and discard piles. But I get to instantly kill that target. And even this target. Definitely attacking this turn. Oh, pop. 27. Excuse me? Oh, I got weakened in the interim? Oh. Lame. Okay. Uh, definitely strike, suppressing, strike again. All right. 
right. I don't know this enemy's pattern at all, so we're going to have a lot of difficulty with a couple of the things here. I am going to... Duplicate shifting gears as well as kidney shot. The reason I'm duplicating shifting gears here is because I want to be able to use... Uh, alleviate to discard all of them. Get myself a bunch of... Uh, whatchamacallits? <clears throat> Protection. Oh, okay. Bunch of spores in my deck now. Ethereal. Draw one card, add one daze to your discard pile. Draw one card, gain one slothful, which negates buffs. Draw one card, negate slothful. Uh, yeah, I don't need that. I'm just gonna let them all burn? I'm just gonna let them burn? Uh, every time you shuffle your draw pile, this card is placed on top. Okay, that's not even that bad. Uh, I'm gonna assume that the enemy's attacking next turn. And they are good. Bunch of spores for me there, though. If I strike, I can now fast forward. Toy Battleship! You got me, Toy Battleship. Again! After I swore, never again! I'm actually going to play this shifting gears. Yeah. I'll exchange this shifting gears and this potential. I just need another attack in hand so that I can guarantee that I kill both of these fungi beasts. Alright. I can't believe how well we're going in these fights. It feels like this deck does nothing but... It's still doing everything? If that makes any kind of sense, which it doesn't, I checked. Ran it by my brain, and my brain was like, I don't know about that one, Rhapsody. Do you want to say it? <laughs> Describes so many things. Huh. The thing is, usually, I wouldn't say it. Ooh, Ethereal draw one card. Okay, so it's, it's just a... I mean, I could use it. I have no knives! Oh. I always forget that you actually need to generate knives if you want to use knives. And this should be a kill next turn. Damn, did we flawless? I think we might have flawless. I think we might have flawless there. Flowering Knight, the card with which I broke the game back when I first played the Servant, used to be a skill. Uh, whenever you play a card, draw a card. You may only draw six uh, cards each turn using this power. Um, I mean, that helps us refill our hands so that we can do everything else. And it upgrades to cost one. Yeah, we're just taking it. Uh, more fill it. Gain energy at the start of each turn. Shop spaces are replaced with elite spaces. Hot Pepper, gain energy at the start of your turn. Upon pickup, reduce your max HP by 35%. Further max HP increase effects are reduced by 50%. And the stopwatch, right click during combat to activate. Usable once per combat. Lose one charge. At the end of your turn, immediately start another turn. Energy and block are maintained between these turns. Start with six charges. Um... I'm definitely leaning more towards... I'm definitely leaning more towards the hot pepper. Because we don't seem to be taking that much damage, but it does feel like we're going to... Ah, whatever, I'm doing it. 45 max HP, who needs more? <clears throat> it's just I have a lot of money. I really want to be able to go to shops. Okay. Murderous Aura will start with the barrier here. Then bottle time.
Get myself an elegance. Don't mind if I do. Especially because I have another barrier in the deck. Barrier benefits two times from excellence as well. Uh, both of these are not attacking next turn. I can guarantee that. Because they'll be blowing up next turn. Great. So that's one of them down easily. Uh, I'm going to have to duplicate, like, Potential and Shattered Reality here. Just so that I have some damage to deal. I'm going to have a lot of difficulty finding the time to hit this Spiker. I'm going to say you're not attacking next turn, because you aren't attacking most turns. Oh, you're attacking. Good to see, I guess. That's okay. I can kill based on my protection. Uh, unruled, ricochet. We want, no, we won't do any of those. Just go for the shop. Ooh, 652 on a red mask. Mm, let me just uh, run that by the old brain hole. Uh, sorry, the brain says no. Uh, deflated dodgeball, you have a 10% chance to dodge attacks. Sure. Sounds good to me. Uh, other than that, let's card remove. That's clumsy. Let's move on. Gonna need another shop later with better things in it. I only have one discard synergy card in hand. Why does this always happen? Like, I have my discard, and I have one card that wants to be discarded, but that's it. All right, looks like I just don't have enough. Like, I've got two Shattered Realities in the deck. Oh, one of them. All right, backline's definitely attacking next turn. I'm going to take six damage this turn just to guarantee the backline dies next turn. Really? Ugh. You're still alive? Now, I'm not talking GLaDOS when I say I'm mad you're still alive. Oh, we're just going to bleed HP over the course of this floor. I can feel it. That'll do it. Whew. Another snipe is a bit much. A lot of cards between me and my synergy cards. I say fully aware that my synergy cards don't even seem to care. Well, at least we've got the exchange retained in hand. Oh, hell of a lot of damage there. Brilliantly executed. Now, I know the backliner is definitely going to be attacking next turn. Let's quickly throw those double defense. Then... That, and you're definitely attacking next turn. Literally, like, you are so pattern-based, of course. Time Warp helps discard, but we don't need things to help discard. Oh, we do need things to help discard, don't we? That's what exactly we need. Oops. Almost passed that over. 
Excuse me while I mute the microphone to snort and snivel. Damned flu! At least it's no longer affecting my throat. That's the... That's, that's the... That's the money maker right there. Need that one working. Everything else? Couldn't care less. Note. Couldn't care less. So we're getting two blight per turn on the enemy here. Not half bad. Um, I'm going to guess you're attacking next turn. Oh, we changed your intent really badly. Damn. Ah, your intent's a lot easier to work with here now. Beautiful. I'm just kind of trying to wait and let that blight stack before I even bother trying to kill. Flowering, then we definitely exchange, discard these two. They both return with great profit. Guess you're attacking next turn, and then discard these. Take no damage. Probably attacking next turn. Not guaranteed, but yeah, you are beautiful. There you go. Spin, ricochet. Deal 18 damage, apply 2 weak to all enemies for 1 energy, and it backlashes. I really do want to do a backlash deck. I'm going to try and do that next, I think. Okay. Let's upgrade bottle time. Getting that innate is really important. Helps us go off a lot faster. At the start of each combat, deal damage equal to 40% of your missing HP to all enemies. I'll take the Sapphire Key. We don't have much missing HP at all. Upgrade all cards. You can no longer heal. That would actually probably help me get through this boss. But it would doom me against the heart. That's if we even decide to go to the heart. But gosh, it looks like we're heading in that direction, doesn't it? That's still a pretty good opening turn right there. Oh, I know you're attacking next turn, obviously. Unless I attack again. <gasps> you're definitely attacking two times next turn. Oh, hell yes. Got him. Oh, just pump him chock full of damage right there. Hell yes. Uh, y'all just shifting gears for the draw. Get a damage. Do a damage. Calipers. At the start of your turn, leaves 15 block rather than all of it. Replace. Have been looking for this. Discard a card from your draw pile. Place a card from your discard pile on top of your draw pile. Uh, we'll drop the weakness potion here. Take the dex. Glowing Tasseract gives us... Look at the top three cards of your draw pile. Add one of them to your hand. Sure. Just a tutor. It places itself at the very least. I may not want to play Murderous Aura here, depending, so. Let's keep going with the attacks. Now we've got two cards that we want to discard. How many times do I trigger the flowering? Okay, one more time I get it. All right, I'll insight. And we find exchange. Wait, what? What's the counter for the flowering knight? Because it just says one. Does it count up from there? Exchange the shifting gears and shattered reality. No, it doesn't count? Oh, so it's draw one card every time you play a card. Oh, so it stacks, but... But then I don't have a counter of how many cards I've played. Okay. Definitely attacking next turn. We 
discard a card that I don't want and put a card I do want back on top of the deck, and then we immediately draw it. Oh no, how'd that happen? My enemy. Another potential? Ooh, at the start of your turn, gain two block for each stack of. Whoa, yes. That's perfect for the backlash build. Obviously, not for ours, but for the backlash build in general. All right. I'm going to recall here just in case I have a bad space next and need to rest thereafter. We don't need to. Uh, heavy Jacket, at the start of each combat, gain one plated armor for every two relics you have. One, two, well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, probably. So nine, we would have nine plated armor. That's pretty good. Put two zero cost cards from your draw pile into your hand. That's also really powerful. Let's take those two and take the zero cost card. And then can we upgrade it? Ooh, visit a bonfire room, get three max HP, and I only get one because of the goddamn... So max HP effects are reduced by 50% and rounded down, as I've just found out. Um, which actually, by the way, means that banana is entirely useless. Banana gives you one max HP, so red hot pepper would turn that to zero. Great. I literally don't think we have a chance against the heart. Like, I think we die to the heart's first attack. So I think probably I use my dex potion now. Okay. Shattered reality potential. I can both discard right now. Kidney shot to weaken the back line should not be... Underestimated here. So I'm setting this up for one more shattered reality to kill them all. <clears throat> eh. I'm going to duplicate potential and alleviate. We'll use the zero cost alleviate to draw all of those back, get potentials back as well as the excellence. You're definitely attacking next turn because you literally don't stop attacking once we enter the fight. <clears throat> so replace gives me the ability to discard any of these at will. I'll discard the shifting gears and put our most buff copy of Potential back atop the deck. Right. Then why don't I immediately draw it thereafter as well? Suppressing Fire is not actually powerful here. We don't need to take it. Flowering Knight is obviously the card we're looking for, though. Attacking next turn. Then... Yeah, fast forward. Good. Definitely advance as well. Okay, now we can discard two more shifting gears, get two more points of excellence. Hell yes. Okay, we'll replace... Probably potential and then put atop our deck time warp. Time warp so that I would be able to deal with both of these potentials as well, by the way. Let me just put back in our hand. Yep. By the end of that, I was doing no damage with attacks because of the Severed Torch Head. I'm just straight up like... Oh, I can only discard up to three? Yeah, up to three it looks like. Okay. I was planning on discarding my entire hand. Uh-huh. I mean, I am still discarding a hell of a lot. Woo! What a turn right there. We cycled through our deck quickly. All right, 
Now we can suppressing fire for all the good that'll do. Place to get probably, probably just another point. Now the reason I can't put the other potential back in the draw pile is because I just discarded it, so it's actually in my hand right now. It just hasn't shown up yet. There it is. Still gotta work all of the blight back up on this enemy. So alleviate should discard the three things with shift triggers. Then you're definitely attacking next turn. This exchange should discard the two things with shift triggers in my hand. Advance to see if I draw anything. And I do time warp to discard the two things with shift triggers in my hand. I know I sound like a broken record. Alleviate to discard the thing with a shift trigger in my hand. Just because now I have a really buff copy of, you know, potential. There we go. Hey, and we immediately get it and kill with it. Nice. That's too many turns against the heart. We would be dead. Ten times over. I, I have to tell you at this point, because it's an hour. Uh, these episodes are usually about 40 minutes long. And I rely on that because it's the Australian summer. So I, uh, I, I start to sweat up a storm at about 40 minutes in a very small, quite enclosed room uh, that has a bunch of soundproofing stuff, uh, which means that it's just a space just full of soft surfaces and no ventilation. I'm, 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 a, I'm a little boy stew right now. I'm just stewing in my clothes. It's not good. Uh, but I usually have a 40-minute episode and then I'll pop on the AC uh, for a short period of time in between episodes. That's not been happening because this episode is over time. So I am just the sweatiest man right now. You didn't need to know it, but now you do. Do you feel better having known it? No? Alright, my bad. I shouldn't have said anything. I'll keep that in mind next time. Next time I don't say anything, that is. Inside to pull out. Oh, there's the potential. This backliner is almost certainly not attacking next turn. Mm -hmm. And they aren't. Okay, let's replace the... Shattered reality and then put the potential back atop the deck. We draw the potential immediately as well. Yeah, I ordered all of that wrong. Also, I should have just killed the spire shield there. Oh, Ryan. Yeah, I'm, I'm about to take a ridiculous amount of damage because I did that. God damn it, Ryan. <laughs> uh, this is such a Ryan move as well. Talking about me, my name's Ryan. <laughs> I only just realized that could sound like shade. Uh, all right. This is not good.
Yeah, we just take a bunch of damage here. Oh. Uh, that's what I get for being a dumb. Uh, right. Definitely use this to discard the... Shattered, there it goes. Now we'll replace to discard our uh, highest value. Whatchamacallit card. Ooh, get a time warp as well, beautiful. Uh, and that is just to put the potential back in my hand. Alright. Beautiful. Dunked him. Let us to her. Obtain a new letter at every future non-boss chest. For every letter, shuffle one letter into your deck at the start of combat. Time theft, vision, gain three energy, draw three cards. I'm going to use that because that's going to be really powerful in this fight where I know the path. I'm not going to defend first here. That. Ooh, actually I could fast forward finally. Nice. Letter of love for some temporary HP as well. Don't mind if I do. Have to take the Flowering Knight. It's too, too important that I have that in play. Okay. Let's get another excellent, actually. Excellent elegance. Not far off. And we use advance for two more zero cost cards in the hand. Oh, we happen to get both of the potentials. Oh, look, we'll just discard those. Right. Time to hit in for some damage now. I mean, that is a lot of damage on turn one. Should have definitely burnt a strike there using reverence. I keep forgetting that I have reverence. Woo! I think I have Flowering Knight. Otherwise, this would be a uh, bad. Now, instead, it's just a not good. Use reverence. Reverence. Relevance. Right there. Okay. These are the hits that I think are going to be a problem. Ooh, duplicate the barrier and the defend. Then I'll barrier, defend, barrier. I'm definitely time thieving because I know you're not attacking next turn. And that's just going to be going to give me a bunch of damage. Give me here. Give me here. No, I know you're not attacking. Why did I choose it? Well, really pooped the bed on that one. All right, get me a discard. Woo, that's a discard card right there. Use alleviate and just discard those three. We'll replace here to get our most powerful cards back. Then just alleviate. Actually, I won't alleviate the time warp because I can just use it again. Hmm. I'll use the exchange to discard both of these potentials, then the time warp to discard each of those potentials. I don't know. They are growing at a really appreciable rate right now. This could be the future of damage. I don't use the fast forward there because I don't want to draw the cards left in the deck. I actually want them to stay there. 36 incoming damage. Oh my gosh. Of course. 
Uh, discard the extra potential as well. Put the time warp back on top of the deck. We draw the time warp immediately. Use it to discard both the potentials. Oh, man. Is this happening? <gasps> Exchange to discard both potentials again. They came back. Whoa, 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 whoa. Plated armor. When receiving attack... Sorry. When receiving attack damage reduces... Receiving attack damage reduces plated armor by one. But protection... Prote protection means... What? Protection. When you lose HP, lose protection. Instead, protection will not be removed at the start of your turn. So temporary HP protects, as far as I'm aware, plated armor. But... Play, uh, but protection does not. That is to say, temporary HP from other mods does it. Okay. Well, now I know that. Insight for... Take the alleviate there. And pop a defend. And then we can alleviate with those. Get a bunch of extra elegance. And he's definitely not attacking next turn. What? Uh, advance. Beautiful. You're not giving me the right cards yet. Okay, we'll take the potential. Put the advance back atop the deck. Uh, I will... Just murder. All right. I did not think that run had that at all. And that didn't contribute. That didn't contribute. That contributed, but sometimes badly because I'm bad. Uh, that definitely contributed. The Earth Fruit. Uh, kinetic Charger never did. Tiny Chest, not really. Hand Mirror, not really. Sundial, definitely. Seven Torchhead gave us the extra energy to play those extra cards, but I still feel bad using it. Uh, slice of Birthday Cake, sure. Onion Ring was definitely good. Sphere of Dissonance as well. Hot Pepper, definitely as well. To play to it feels like the Relics didn't contribute that much to it either. Like, we just scaled that potential real well. Ah, okay, no no unique scene here. Damn. Well, for the moment, my name's been Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Slayed by a Modded. That has been The Servant. Uh, there's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on this game, past, present, and future, as well as a link to the Steam Store Workshop Collection uh, that has all of the mods that I've played over the course of this series, past, present, and future, that are available in the Steam Workshop, in it, in which you can find the Servant. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and we will see you next episode for some more Servant gameplay.